Chairman, uh, let me let me mention to you that uh, when you announced that you were stepping down on on Monday, I got a, a email from a CEO who said that you that your your tenure has been vastly underappreciated. You've been relatively quiet. You come on Squawk Box a handful of times, but said Jay Clayton could go down as actually the most effective SEC chair in history. What he's done to level the playing field and create opportunities to bridge the wealth gap are incredible. And I know it's immensely technical, but the SEC's recent harmonization rules streamlining capital raising for small businesses is a game changer. My question to you is when, when, when you hope that people look back on your tenure, what, what do you want them to uh, perhaps appreciate or, or what you think may be underappreciated? We're showing uh, some numbers for enforcement actions. I know some of the criticism has been that you, that you haven't been as forceful uh, on that, but the numbers reflect otherwise. Well, it, it's really about Main Street investor participation. Um, look, let me compliment you guys. Frank Luntz was on the other day complimenting you guys on how, how you bring uh, these issues of our interconnected economy um, uh, you know, out in a very clear way. Um, our Main Street investors need to be interconnected with our economy. And how can they do that in the most efficient way and get a deal where they're sitting side by side with the professional investors. Uh, that's That's been my perspective. That's the perspective of the women and men here at the SEC. How do we keep making it better for them? And uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned, Andrew, is our private markets. Um, for most small and medium-sized businesses, our public markets are not an option. Uh, they need to fund themselves in our private markets. Um, to do so, you need to find investors. But investors also want to find those opportunities. One of the things we've tried to do is make sure that our Main Street investors can sit side by side with professional investors in those opportunities, and also that small and medium-sized businesses do not need the array right. of lawyers and other professionals that public companies need in order to access capital. Uh, that's been a driving force here, you know, all with investor protection in mind. Jay, what do you think, though? Historically, some of some of the people who've been in your role have had a, a much more antagonistic, uh, at least pu publicly antagonistic approach towards business. Um, you have you actually have had and the enforcement numbers are clear. You can look at the data, uh, but but you've taken at, at least um, rhetorically a different approach. And I'm curious how you think that the next chairman should approach this. Uh, look, I. Maybe it's my my personality, uh, whatever it is. Um, I, I believe in investors. I also believe in investing. Um, you have to have good companies to invest in, and we we have um, tremendous companies in this country. Sixty two of the world's hundred largest public companies are are here in the United States. Incredible engines for growth. We've seen them respond to right. the pandemic um, in an incredibly transparent way. That said, if somebody does something wrong, we're going to whack them. Um, but we don't need to uh, paint with a broad brush. Uh, we need to paint with a, with a scalpel. Um, if you have a bad executive, they should be out of the business. It's a privilege to be a public company executive. But by and large, um, the way our, this recent period has demonstrated that our public companies, public-private partnership, it is an incredible strength of America. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.